And in speaking of opportunities for support in other locations, I now turn to um, Dr. Ignacio Socias, Director of Communications at IFFD, and he will tell us about the work of IFFD. Ignacio. very much, Eve, for your kind introduction, and thank you very much to the permanent mission of Qatar for sponsoring this event, uh, together with, of course, the Division for Inclusive Social Development of DESA. And once again, I should say that DIFI had the immense value of conceiving the idea of gathering all these organizations to show how important parenting is in our lives, in our society. I was, for instance, very pleased to see that on Christmas Day, the New York Times devoted part of its cover to this topic or a few weeks later, there was uh, this special report in The Economist on families in general and parenting in particular. So we can say that more and more parenting is becoming a verb we should use, we should value, we should consider as an important part of our lives. Of course, for us at IFFD, no need to say this is really important because it's what we deal with usually with uh, helping parents to be better parents. With this very, very simple, uh, I don't know if I can show this better. With a very simple graphic, I wanted to show how important parents are for children's life. But I think that we really, after all the interventions we have had, we don't need to show that with a, a real family and with real parenting, children get what they need. While what this lacks, then it comes society, peers, media, and so on, and we see that a children grows up in a different way, not in the right way. But my point today is, is all kinds of parenting the same? And I want to turn into, yeah, thank you. I, can, I think I can manage now, into the civil society statement when it says that the scientific evidence confirms the importance of positive parenting. So this gives us a hint of what kind of parenting we should turn to when we want to help our children, our societies. Positive parenting practices and behaviors are beneficial for health, education, child well-being, and overall well-being outcomes for children and also for adolescents. This is something that the United Nations has been repeating during the past years. For instance, in this last resolution on the International Year of the Family, uh, approved last November, when it says, initiatives to promote involved and positive parenting have been found to be beneficial in advancing social integration and solidarity between generations, as well as in promoting and protecting the human rights of all family members. Of course, this resolution comes from the report of the Secretary General that also mentions different examples in different countries on how positive parenting is working well. Okay, but then what is positive parenting? Without wanting to be really very exhaustive or very, even very comprehensive, let me just give some ideas of what I think 
it's universally accepted. Positive parenting should be focused on the understanding that children come into the world primed with the tools and capacities to follow a path of optimal growth and development. I'm sure that most of you had visited Rome and had visited this very nice uh, Michelangelo's image called La Pietà. It is said that when he was working on it, someone asked, how are you going to figure out how to do this? And his reply was, the image is there. I only have to take out everything else. So I think this is a good approach for parenting. Not thinking that we should, so to say, make our children be whatever you want them to be. They already have the tools and capacities to follow a path of ultimate growth and development to be what they really are. So in that sense, we could say that the first characteristic of positive parenting is that it should be more focus on responsiveness than on demandingness. Second, let me just go through this table very, very quickly. Uh, positive parenting is, if we refer to these uh, common styles of parenting used, it's not authoritarian parenting, it's not permissive parenting, it's not neglectful, but authoritative high expectations for self-control, high sensitivity, respectful of child's opinions, but also maintaining clear boundaries to help them not to get out of their way, not of our way. And then let me mention also secure attachment. Another concept which I think is very important has been developed a lot recently. <coughs> A close parent-child relationship with secure attachment is a sure sign of positive parenting. When there is this secure attachment, the parent makes a child feel safe, secure, and protected. And this is opposed to avoidant attachment and ambivalent or resistant attachment too. And three more basic principles that I think we should consider when trying to help parents uh, and, and trying to promote this positive approach. There should be mutual respect between a parent and child based on the best interest of the child. You all know, I'm sure, that we will celebrate in November the 30th anniversary of the Convention of the Rights of the Child, which basically promotes this best interest of the child, something that is often forgotten in many, many court decisions and even medical decisions. Second, parents should use natural consequences of the child's actions, different from rewards of punishments. Uh, rewards and punishments are usually the quick way, the easy way, but not the efficient way to be a parent. And parents should let children do for themselves what they can, even with still inadequate efforts. Uh, if I may add to this something I've experimented along the world, the patience to wait children to grow up enough to make our eff their, their efforts um, really efficient is something very, very important because many times parents tend to do it by themselves instead of helping children learn their own way. So what are we expecting with this declaration from the state? In my opinion, we think that when we find parents who are authoritarian or authoritative, or try to be authoritative, 
we need to prevent conflict. Prevention is very important because quite often we see that once the, that conflict arises in children or in parents, it's much more difficult to solve it. So preventing it is very important. And this can be done through parenting education, of course. The last um, resolutions of the UN have also mentioned it. Okay. So how much is doing every single state we want to reach uh, on parenting education? Uh, in the OECD, they usually say, in all these things, if you pay now, you pay less. <coughs> Investing in parenting education can save a lot of money for the future. But then, when parenting is very permissive, then there is this need for support. And parents shouldn't be replaced, but sometimes someone has to do something about it. And that's the state. And that can very well done through counseling. And third, when, really, when there are really neglectful situations, the state needs to intervene and sometimes even to institutionalize uh, children. But knowing this, that this is the very last step, because we also know that where children, with the custody of the children has to be taken by the state, things don't usually go very well. So as parenting is a process, this prevention I'm advocating for now means not only accessing those who are doing it efficiently, but also reaching young people before the process starts. That is why some have suggested, and I think it can be a good idea, including parenting education in the official school or curriculum, for instance. Um, we, we were in another event this morning considering how young people usually, when they want to start a family, they have to face a lot of difficulties. Uh, time difficulties, money difficulties. And sometimes also that they don't know what to do. That's why in our federation we have started this course on personal projects, showing that everyone, every young man or every young woman should have a project for their lives. You can see more information about this there in this paper, and I think most of you already have a copy of it. This is one of our last issues on positive parenting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ignacio. I so appreciate the work of IFFD and, and read with interest the, the sendings that you, uh, that you share with us. Certainly, positive parenting practices are not just one thing. They change with the age of the child, and just when you figured out how to be an absolutely A number one ace parent to the little ones, then they turn six, and they're different. And I heard a father say it's like watching paint dry to see their child develop. So patience is certainly a key factor. I appreciate that, Ignacio. We all need reminders.